I'm sure you know. So apart from that, is Transcorp. I'm also believing that probably Transcorp would um, uh, do magical numbers too. So then lastly, I want to mention about Girigu. Girigu, I, I believe Girigu is um, underpriced at the moment. So I think if anybody has money, we can put our money on it because I'm sure by the time uh, everything is done and it is well transformed, it could, it could be one of the magical stock uh, in, the, in, in the next couple of months and years. These are my opinions and I've been looking at them. I just want to know what is your own thought about them. Thank hmm. you. I'm putting up Girigou while Olumide is answering. I mean, Olumide is going to... Olumide is... Uh, UBA Bank, they've got very, very good staff. The guys that make money for them in the bank are very, very good. How? They make a lot of money from... I don't start going to... How they manage their balance sheet with the devaluation, they make a lot of money there. The bank has made a lot of money as well from just doing the normal thing that other banks do but don't make money. So they have a very, very good grasp <clears throat> on how to make money. That's for UBA Bank. One trillion, their, their CEO gives them an extra, not their CEO. What Tony does for UBA, you can't quantify it, right? You can't quantify it. I, see, I saw Rema with him. I saw White Party. Tony Lumi, the White Party. I saw all that stuff happening. People think it's a party. That is high-level marketing. High, the highest level. Because what he's saying is that this guy is so cool that all these guys want to associate with him. So I see also associate with UBA. So UBA is getting that, you know, it's rubbing off on UBA that people want to open accounts to UBA. Guys are brother doing transfers to UBA. It's helping them, right? And that's a big, big, big factor that TOE brings in. Transcorp, they're now a trillion dollar, trillion naira company. Hotel, the same hotel we all run. Trillion dollar. You know, you look at, it was Nikon Noga before, it was a marquee brand. And when they sold that, um, it, was, no, it was Hilton, it was a Hilton, right? It was a Hilton. And when the Hilton left, I thought, wow, they've lost their brand name. And who knows Transcorp? Transcorp took it over. But now Transcorp is now associated in Nigeria with um, high-end, can do large projects. They are doing power. They are doing hotels. So they've turned that name into this a good name, a good brand, more or less. And the hotel is doing very, very well, you know. So again, they get it's rubbing off again on them. Uh, Gerigu, I'm looking at it. Let me let Olumide jump in. Let me look at Gerigu's numbers. Olumide, he, he said he wants. He says Gerigu is underpriced. He he said price, not value. I don't know if you caught that. Uh, okay, well, uh, I don't think he's underpriced <laughs> actually because I look at the revenue and profit. Sixty million dollars profit. Uh, Twenty million dollars. You look at market value about one billion. That's if you use exchange rate of a thousand to a thousand dollar to a dollar. Uh, I think investors are looking at that stock as a growth stock because it's uh, when you compare numbers with uh, the UB, for example, uh, that valuation seems to be um, on the high side. But uh, you, you said so many key important things, but I think a lot of people ignore tier two banks. Look at what Neca um, has done in Fidelity. In fact, you, if you invested in Fidelity when she came um, to the Ems of Affair, that's by the valuation of Naira. You even adjust the valuation of Naira because I really took positions when I saw what she did uh, in the banking industry and her temperament and her understanding of uh, the uniqueness of Fidelity Bank has made a difference. This bank is within striking distance of 500 um, billion Naira. For a tier two bank, that's awesome. You would have made far more than UBA. Then also look at Sterling. Sterling Sulaiman, very quiet man. He came from Accenture to InterSwitch. He has changed the organization in Sterling. They've had a very competitive area in retail. And the products, they are really going to blockchain technology, oh. mixing um, tech with um, traditional finance. And that was why it was unsurprising when the Sterling was the best performing stock in the um, in 2023 then i think for me um the shining star is wema uh wema look at what wema did with alerts and this was a bank that was already uh signaled to 
to be on the graveyard. Yeah, if you recall, um, back in the years, uh, Wema had issues with capitalization, but now they've um, surpassed metric, and I think they push on brand. So Nigerian banks uh, are something that. But the the problem with the pricing I have right now is that for me, when I go in now, I, I've sold some of my holdings, but I've kept, but I'm not buying. Will I look for opportunities? Definitely. Maybe if there are dips, I'll wait after any seasons. You know, many of the reasons why we are seeing rally in these stocks are because um, investors are positioned for dividend payments. And definitely, I expect um, some windfall in that. So I think conservative investors might want to um, wait and wait to investment broker. But uh, for Giriku, Transco Hotel, yes, cool. Tony Limonu is a star in the room. But I think I think it takes it, take, it often takes the shine away from some of outstanding bank executive, particularly guys that are in tier two banks. I think we need to look at them, and I think we also need to give Neka props. That woman deserves a GCF, uh, GS, uh, GCUN because honestly, <laughs> what she has done in that bank, I I think it's something that needs to be studied in our business. Movie. Interesting. I'm looking at I'm looking at Gerengu now, right? <clears throat> it looks like that was a company that or the stock price blew up it popped up and it's coming back down so their earnings are, are down in the last five years just by one percent not bad profit margin is lower 17 percent lower than last year so that's to show that the earnings popped and it's coming back down if we go into detail right the stock have, has been up 187 percent in one year and that's why people are looking at it, 187%. So they are, like they said, they are looking at this as a growth stock. But it's a utility. Utilities do not go up in price 187% unless somebody is buying the stock, right? So the Nigerian market went up 66%. This guy went up 187%. So it's unusual for a utility that has seams of payment, you know, like regular seams of payment to basically go up 187%. So I would not be, I would take this, take this as an outlier. And when you now come to the meat of it, dividend yield for Gerigo is 1.9. Which means the dividend is good, but if you had bought at the high price, your return would be 1.9%. Even though they are paying around a 4% payout ratio, but it's still 1.9. Debt to equity, 147. High debt, not good. Net profit margin, 17%. That's very, very low. Gross margin, 48%. Look at the gross margin is 48. Net margin is 17. High cost there. And I bet most of those costs are going towards paying debt because we have a high debt to equity ratio. And it's per share, 4. So not a stellar pro, not a stellar stock. I would say the stock went up in price, yes. And that's why we see the quote unquote the noise around it. But it's a good stock to have if you're like a pensioner or you want your guaranteed return because there's no risk to this company per se. They make power, they sell power, they get the dividends. So for for so be it, that's what the numbers say. I'm just quoting the numbers uh, back to you. I don't know if it's good or Uncle, bad. Yeah, go ahead. Yes, Uncle, it's heavily <coughs> concentrated. It's heavily concentrated. Uh, one guy has at least. 90% stake in the company, if you look at the latest earning, mm. so it, tells, it tells you why that stock, because if you look at the price and you look at the liquidity around that stock in terms of inter uh, trading, you see that it's not really a stock that uh, uh, retail investors will find, so maybe pension funds and selective institutional investors, and I think the deal he had with that multinational bank also, uh, that uh, Bought into equity into the help, but the stock is heavily concentrated. So I think uh, investors are need to be aware of that risk. And off the record, off the record, what really happened with this guy? What really happened? Um, he had a spat in court with Tunelumelu as regards Transcorp. So there was a bit of action. The people were thinking that Tuna was going to come back and buy Girigu, and the thing just went up in prices. It's off the record, right? But that might have factored into the pricing. Let me give you correct just to give you uh, BA, just to give you so you can compare. The PE for Transcorp is 441. The PE for Gerigu is 93. So what I'm saying is that Transcorp at the price today, the price at 13 Naira is cheaper than Gerigu. 
Transcorp at 13 naira is cheaper than Gary Group because the PE uh, for Transcorp is about 41. The one year return for Transcorp, guess the number. Guess the number for the one year return on Transcorp. Guess the number. 1,044%. So I compared those to Transcorp and Gary Group. Remember, Transcorp is where they had all that back and forth on. So it's price movement. I don't think they, they made sales of 1,000%, but the price movement is what we're talking about as moving this share price up and down. So if you look at the earnings, it doesn't correspond to the price movement, but if someone wants to buy, the share price will go up and it becomes historical. It then goes in and it quote-unquote corrupts the pricing sheet. Does that make sense, B.A.? Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, sincerely, um, you guys are amazing. I, I quite understand everything you're trying to say. And just like you said, I think for now, if one is thinking of um, uh, probably uh, to just keep it for as, as a means of pension, I think then one can go into it. Well, what I'm actually looking uh, at is that the probability of um, uh, Nigeria as a country getting it right in terms of um, in the energy sector, you know, by time yeah. able to deal with our... Uh, distribution and, and, and transmission majorly that's where the problem is yeah the problem in nigeria the, the problem in nigerian power is not distribution or generation or that you know what the problem in nigerian power is nigerians are too poor to afford power supply so if you want if gerengu was to charge nigerians the real price for power nobody can afford it because of that there's a subsidy so that subsidy is what makes power affordable. But for Gerigu and power supply in Nigeria to really move up, the prices have got to be reflective of market. That's what's promised. So if if you if today GE or Siemens see that if they build a power plant in Nigeria, they get that money back because Nigerians will pay for power. Tomorrow you see them here. But as long as you keep a subsidy, it's the same way we subsidized PMS and subsidized dollar. Power is cheap in Nigeria. And when I'm saying people are going to attack me, but I'm telling you the fact, it is cheap because it's a subsidy. Take away the subsidy, the price that we Nigerians will pay, we can't afford it. Nigerians are, Nigerians are not really rich. And that's the problem, that you've got to grow the wealth of the Nigerians who afford power. That's the problem we're having. Gas is in Nigeria. Unless we subsidize the gas, then the power will be affordable. If we do that, maybe, but then we lose out on the export market. That's what I would do. I would allow the gas, I would not make money on gas supplies in Nigeria to attract foreigners to come to Nigeria. You know, in Ghana, when um, Aluminum Company of America, Alaco, wanted to set up in Africa, they went to Ghana because the Ghanaians built a dam, Upper Volta Dam. That's what other whole thing was all about. Nigeria has got gas. We have more gas. In short, we have Nigeria has just a little bit of oil and a lot of gas. If I was a president, look at what I'll say. I'll say if you can bring the gas out of the ground, use it for free. If you pass that policy, you have lots of international companies coming to Nigeria just for the cheap power. We have enough of the power. But when they bring it out of the ground, will they burn it? No. When it's out of the ground, the Nigeria will now go and say, okay, it's already out of the ground. Let's connect our pipe to it. So you use your gas for free, but we're going to connect our own pipe to your gas pipe that you brought out of the ground. I'm making it simplified. But we have got to use the gas reserves that Nigeria has as an advantage for Nigeria. We just can't allow the gas to just be, we have large gas and we're flaying it. When we have companies all around the world, look at Germany today. German factories are closing down. Because there's no more cheap Russian gas. So you have steel plants. Steel plants. Nothing wrong with them. Closed down in Germany. I saw a video of the last steel mill was going through closure. A serious government will go to, to, to Germany and say, this steel plant, just export it, bring it to Nigeria and plant it in Nigeria. Nigerians will run it. But we will give it cheap gas and we would export the, the, the iron duty free. From Nigeria to Germany. So the Germans get their steel cheaper from Nigeria, right? But Nigeria gets a steel plant that we can then use the steel from that steel plant in Nigeria. You know, we have to think 
you know, unsystematic in this world. We can't just go the normal, go and look for FDI. If you've got cheap gas, use it. But if you don't fix that gas thing, I just can't afford power. Maybe when the economy improves, then we can afford power. Then all them Girigu, Transcorp, the rest will just be blew up. So, like you said, it's a buy for a pensioner or a guy that's looking for long term. That's what I would I would advise. Olympia, do you have any any calls on that? Okay. All right, cool. There's a guy asking me here, and this is the question I get all the time. Someone is asking, is it wise to take dollar, or in this case, he's in Canada. He's asking, I live in Canada, and I want to invest monthly in Nigerian stocks for the next five years. Is it smart, given the whole dollar devaluation in Nigeria? Well, look at it this way, right? If you think... Nigeria will get better in five years, then it's smart. If you think it won't get better, it's not smart. Ignore dollar devaluation. The dollar, you know, before elections, I told you guys, the dollar can go from 1,200 today to 500 in one week. One week. It's not impossible. The dollar is demand and supply. The market has not seen supply. That's why it's 1,200. If the market sees supply, it will crash. And again, I made a caveat to you guys. You don't even need to inflow the dollars. What the market just needs to see is that dollars will come and will come consistently and the market will crash. Nigerians today are holding dollar, not to trade. Nobody sells rice or, or beans with dollar in my village. But they are holding dollars because the Naira is inflating away its purchasing power. So if you restore the confidence of Nigerians to hold the Naira, there will be less need to hold the dollar, then there will be less pressure on the dollar. So the dollar, it's, if you feel Nigeria will improve in five years, then this is the time to buy. Because everybody is running away from Nigeria. So you buy today. You ignore the valuation. But if you feel in five years Nigeria will be Somalia, then why are you putting your money in Nigeria? I personally, I always have an exposure in Nigeria. I, I'm invested in Nigeria. My book is in Nigeria. I have property. I have it in Nigeria. Because it's, it's, it's Nigeria. I know it. But if you think you don't have the time, don't do it. There are other places you can invest and make even more money in Nigeria. But Nigeria is where you know. So if someone says buy land in Edo, you know where Edo is. You know what's happening in Edo or Niger or Kogi. That's why you're investing in Nigeria. Because you know it. In Canada, if I tell you to go and buy line in Saskatchewan, you know where it's on the map, but you haven't gone there before. You don't know the, the, the demography. You don't know what's happening there. That's the only reason why I buy Nigeria. Not because of the retail, but because you know it. In Brazil, a guy in Brazil gave Nigerians almost $300 million to buy an airport because they told him that they were the central bank governor. That's Mr. Ude. Why could they do that fraud on the Brazilian guy? Because the guy did not know Nigeria. So he assumed that anyone that he sees on a picture on, that say in the CBN office is really the CBN office. That's how he got defrauded. The same with you. If you invest where you don't know, you are liable to lose money. But because you know Nigeria, it's an easier place to invest. So you are in Canada, invest in Canada. But Nigeria is where you know. If someone says, I want to do a seed plant in Kogi, you know where Kogi is. You know what will happen because you've seen it in america so you feel that if tesla comes to nigeria they'll make money that, that's the whole idea otherwise don't just put your money in in vietnam in um, china in india you make more money than nigeria but you don't know india you don't if someone says name five medical companies in india you don't know but if someone says name five medical companies in nigeria you know so you know where to put your money in that's the whole idea for you right so I would say if you can, I mean, if you take 1% of your Canadian income and you invest in Nigeria, how much is it? $1,000 is nearly a million. Will you miss a $1,000 in a year? So if I say I'm going to invest $100 a year in Nigeria, how would you miss that? How much is Starbucks? Starbucks is $8. So $8 a day. Most of you guys buy Starbucks every day. 8 times 5, 40. 40 times 4 is almost what? One. More than, more than the dollar. So, take a hundred dollars 
and invest in Nigeria. If Nigeria is born, eh, let it burn, it has gone, you've lost the money, end of story. But what if Nigeria actually turns out good and you are buying now? You don't make money when the market is up. You make money when the market is down. That's my answer to that, um, to Mr. Obona. You, you said something that I just wanted to hear, that we should we need to also look at that, that the trying times of Nigeria gives you an opportunity because you don't make, you know, the, the fact that the country is still new in terms of industrialization, the fact that our population is still, you could still get, but you just uh, be very... Uh, Informative on, on how you place those bets. Hello. You know, look at the Indian stock market, for example. Hello. It has a market value of four trillion. The GDP is just um, um, a, a, a bit higher than and um, less higher than that. Nigeria's GDP is about um, 370 billion plus. The stock market valuation is 45 billion. It tells you the market is suppressed. Mm. suppressed. FN market liquidity is suppressed. Mm. Insecurity has suppressed um, the real estate market. The debt capital. All these things will not last forever. At some point, Nigeria will definitely turn around. Those that bet on risk will definitely get that reward. And those that complain and stay on the sideline will always become uh, lookers. That's what happened in the stock market last year. Well, only Nigeria has maybe three countries that Nigeria can turn to. There are three countries Nigeria can turn to. Number one, Nigeria can be Brazil. So the word Banana Republic for insecurity, military rule, corruption, anyhow goes, bandits was Brazil in 1970s, where it was just free for all. Bad governance, banditry, kidnapping. You know, in Brazil, you couldn't go on the road. The, the rich guys lived in skyscrapers and went helicopter to helicopter. So they'll go from this skyscraper to this skyscraper by helicopter. But look at Brazil today. Look at Brazil today. That's one pathway for Nigeria, that we can turn this around, get good governance, and start to create wealth at the local level and then we move on to a Brazil type brick level. Nigeria also has the Russia pathway where insecurity stays but we then have a strong man that will come in and put in strong man governance so whereby you'd have strong men everywhere there will be corruption but people will be rich or the government will provide for them there will be no freedoms and, you know, it'll be one man who own the whole of Nigeria, but there'll be no kidnapping because the army will be everywhere. Things like that. That's the second part of Nigeria. No freedoms, but it'll be safety and owned by one or two men, warlords. That's Russia. We also have the pathway, maybe Georgia. The one I mean Georgia, this is the Republic in South, you know, South in Europe, in Eastern Europe. Georgia was so corrupt. This is the former Soviet Union. Corrupt place. Corrupt place. They had one guy, one guy came into Georgia, turned the place around. I remember there was a case where some, some guys did quite a brand new position and he built a brand new position made with glass. So you could see inside the position. It wasn't the glass per se, but it was the idea of transparency. Google Georgia. Go on Google Georgia now and say where Georgia went from, from perception to date or where they've gone from FDIs to date. How their students have gone from poverty. So put a line up to buy bread. Google where they are today. Google Georgia where they are today. Even Macedonia. All those countries. So there are many parts of Nigeria. And if we get it wrong, we can even go to Somalia. Where we have actual warlords. Or Sudan. Look at what's happening in Sudan. Five years ago, or three years ago, Sudanese were celebrating the removal of a dictator. Bashar was gone. And the Sudanese youth were celebrating that they had removed the dictator. Now you have a militia fighting the armed forces in on the streets of Sudan. Nobody cares. They will kill the son of Sudan. Sudan is a very ancient, proud nation. Because no one it's not even in the news. They're gonna kill the sons of Sudan and nobody will care. Because they're all blacks in Africa, nobody gives a damn. So we should be careful where we're going to, but we have many pathways. The path we choose is left for what we decide. Well, let me have a good question here for you, right? Someone is asking, bought the MTN shares, bought about a thousand shares, it's been up, she has got the dividends three times, and if you she got the dividends three times, wants to increase MTN from 1,000 units to 3,000 units. It's just asking to check, is it is there anything they are missing? Is it a good investment to buy? Is MTN a good investment to buy? That's basically what they are asking. Let me give my take, maybe you can hop in. For me, I always look at market share. 
What is the predominant mobile telecom company in Nigeria today? MTN. Who is doing fintech? The most, the largest fintech company in Nigeria today? Momo. It might not be MTN, but it looks like their DNA is the same, right? So it, look, who, what what are fiber optics and all that? MTN. So MTN is here to stay. It's now MTN Nigeria. She you on driving South Africans. Now it's MTN Nigeria. So they are now a Nigerian company. If MTN is failing, that means Nigeria is failing. That's put, let's put it that way. It's now tied to the growth of Nigeria in such a way that if should MTN fail, then Nigeria, of course, has failed. So your question will be mute. So I would say, I personally write, all the dividends MTN has paid me, I put it back into MTN. All the dividends I got from MTN, I put it back into MTN and I'm buying more and more and more MTN. It's a simple, it's a simple company. You want to talk, you take their phone and you talk. The only risk I see to MTN is if a foreigner comes here. If a foreigner comes to Nigeria, let's say Xfinity comes to Nigeria and starts to offer phone lines, then of course MTN now becomes their catching up. Look at what happened to the football. They couldn't compete with money. So DSTV and the DSTV guys couldn't compete with money. MTN is not like that. You know, they might have they have a lot of power, firepower, but MTN wants to do it wants to become the African Amazon. That's what they want to become. They want to focus only on Africa. So they sold Iran, they sold other countries, they came to only Africa. They want that if you want to go into the internet in Africa, you want to go through MTN. So when you buy MTN, you're actually buying in the digital future of the youngest continent on earth. You are saying that the African continent is going to improve and grow economically. That's the bet you're making. And that because they improve, they're going to need data for their hospitals, for their offices, for their cars, for their Teslas and all that. That's your bet. So if you think that's the direction of Africa, then MTN is of course a fantastic stock for you to buy. I've given you what I am doing. I'm not recommending, I'm just telling you what I am doing. So Olumide, do you have any, you have the intricacies. Do you have, is there any skeletons in the cupboard? Yeah, I just want to just, uh, for academic research, just like you rightly retreated, and I think uh, most of your points were spot on. Uh, but is, uh, MTN Nigeria stock is one stock that also um, excites me, particularly in um, women's uh, sphere. If you look at the uh, listing, most buyers were women, so I was not surprised to see <laughs> That's true. Uh, the questionnaire being a woman. And the you know you have to also look at um, Nigerian women when it comes to investing. They are quite they quite have a high for value investing, so it has a strong buying power. That stock is so well. You could say well the stock is not um, the charms or the transcorp hotel that you get a one thousand return. If you're looking at future, if you're looking at cash flow, you're looking at um, less drawdown, and you're looking at um, high potential. Well. It's a stock you might consider. The reason why I cannot really recommend it is that I think she also needs to build a relationship with her investment bank. Uh, this is because uh, she needs to know how her income is being spread. And like she said, she wants to buy that much. It means she's in the middle class, uh, upper middle class or middle class bracket, uh, eight out of two. So uh, if she can, well, that's it. But what you need to understand right now is that MT is not a stock that doubles yeah, naturally, if you look at when our stock were rallying down um, on uh, three, four, five, six, seven times, MTN was just but this is a stock you don't want to ignore your portfolio, and you know, pension funds definitely uh, keep uh, that stock. No, look, is, is, is MTN a dividend stock or a is it value stock? What would, how would you place MTN if you had to apportion it? What would you place it? Is it a dividend, the dividend king? What, what is it? Uh, you know, it, 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 when you look at it, 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 it's not something you see from. It, you can't compare with the likes of Zenit or GT, for example, a UP. Uh, those ones are the dividend kings in terms of yield. Uh, but I think when you look at the price, I think it, it's still uh, kind of fair percentage wise. You, you don't get that in America. Uh, I don't have the numbers on my head right now, but. I think it's yield is quite decent. It's much more better than Giroku, for example. And you look at how the company's muzzle, you know, financial muzzle, and look at uh, how they've been able to 
take the telco uh, industry in Nigeria to a greater. I think they have. But my question here is that you know we have Nigerians that are used to two X investments. You know, so I'm trying to make them understand that this is not a cruise stock. This is a but this is a, this is an asset that don't uh, show exponential, but they have contribution consistent growth and rewarded shareholders. You know, in terms of dividend. So just like you said, investing in dividend. That's what Olimiluto was most of the time. You see, most of these bank guys. Rather than keeping the dividend, they reinvest in the company. So it has a compounding effect, and that's one way of maximizing and uh, potential. You know, rather than just putting the dividend, open a dividend account, try to reinvest back into it, and you know, from yeah. there you can keep on um, expanding your um, capital growth. Let me do the numbers, so let me do, let me do the numbers. And I'm not sure if it's the lady, but picture is the lady. So if you're not a lady, we apologize, but Olympia is correct. The ladies killed MTN. I don't know why why Olympia, why do you think more ladies bought MTN than guys? It was a large proportion of ladies that bought that MTN stock. What were they, what, what do you think happened? I, I think it's three things. I think it's three things. Ladies, because I've been able to from the crypto market it because uh, I've been able where data showed gender uh, bias. Women invest more than guys. The mm. thing is that women are quite quiet. They are mm. not less egoistic. So the average woman doesn't show a trading account, blah, blah, blah. The average Nigerian woman, the average Nigerian woman that invests, she's highly educated. Mm. He looks at uh, th- uh, things from value perspective. You know, at MTN, you see they have a very good PR marketing team. Mm. Uh, they position their brand in such a way that, you know, uh, an average uh, user can relate. So, uh, I'm not surprised. I knew the gap so much. More than I think eighty percent of the yeah. Uh, women. Yeah, it was. It was. It was, it was yeah. It was. Uh, the guys of MTN, uh, yeah. So, would you want to bet against those kind of uh, uh, type of class? And not just women. Not, 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 not just women, but the lower number, like they were buying the the, prop, the ten thousand, twenty thousand, fifty thousand. Not just women, but the level of amount they were investing in. The amount, not just one million, but ten thousand, fifty thousand. It was interesting. But let me look at the numbers. The bad thing I see. Let me look at. Let me do the bad side first. The bad thing I see for MTN is they have a high level of debt, huge debt. So they are they are, they are doing bonds. They are doing equity. Their debt to equity is three hundred and twenty nine percent. Right. Their gross margins seventy nine percent. Their net margins ten percent. That shows you they do a lot of cost, a huge amount of cost. Olympic, I can bet this cost have to do with diesel to power their base stations. I can bet. So if they move to yeah, solar, right. yeah, yeah, or something, that cost goes away. You know, this is how, this how you see this again the story of Nigeria. That if Nigeria becomes better, then MTN doesn't need to do diesel. So MTN stocks go up and everybody gets richer. But now you make 79 gross. Net is 10. Crazy. Ennis per share, though, are 11. 11 Ennis per share. Very, very good. Dividend yields 5.5 for MTN. So MTN has a high payout rate, but they are not paying out everything from the Ennis they are making. So I mean that the, the Ennis they are making is not covering the dividends they are paying. So they want to pay more because they want to reward their shareholders, but they are not making enough from the company to pay those dividends. So that's the red flags I see. But if you look at the positive, really positive uh, issues that we're talking about, they have earnings are forecast to grow about 43%. You know, uh, so if the company has a bright future. I again, I don't want to bring this in, but I saw glue taking off the whatever. So that might impact on the pull my port to MTN from that company uh, because they can't get that connectivity. So MTN is sort of is 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 placed properly to grow. Uh, returns for one year was 23%. That beat the telecoms index, but it's below the Nigerian market index of 66. So they did 23% last year or one year to date. Nigerian market has done 66%. So MTN is underperforming Nigerian market, but it's beating the telecom subsector in that market. So overall, yeah, I would say, yeah, go ahead, Lundi. I just want to add one thing. Um, I, I think we should not be so worried about their debt position because. Uh, one of the um, admirable um, edge MTN has is that they've been able to source their debt locally. Very smart. If you look at FX devaluation loss last year, 
MTN was not um, as bad as what we saw with Nestle or Cadbury in pretty terms. So I think, yeah, one we are concerned about, if you look at the way they've been able to uh, um, get their debt exposure, they, uh, they relied more on local markets. So I think it's not something we should be so worried about. Mm. They are investing for growth. They are they, when they mean MTN Nigeria, what they did was they sold equity to Nigerians and they are borrowing from Nigeria to invest in Nigeria. In the past it was MTN borrowing South African company borrowing from Nigeria to invest in Nigeria. So sort of they've they reduced that risk to the corporate South African and they've become full Nigerian. So when I see people online saying don't use MTN Nigeria, they don't know what they're talking about. This is a Nigerian company. Right, a Nigerian company. All right, let's get Dikoma. Dikoma, oh, sorry, Dikoma, hold on. I've got uh, Infinite. Infinite, bl- Infinite. Go ahead and Dikoma. Infinite, go ahead. Infinite, how was it? Hello, can you hear me? I can. Go ahead, sir. And thanks for the DM. I, right. I appreciate the yeah, DM. Go ahead. Hey, you're welcome. So I just want to contribute something about MTN. Uh, December last year, I was looking at their books uh, after the FX devaluation loss. Mm. I saw that NTN has made adjustments to um, cope with this new FX reality. And that the other companies are also exposed to FX devaluation loss. If anyone is investing in NTN, it's wise to look at, or any other company at all, look at how much exposure they have to the FX challenges going forward. and. Um, what, 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 can you be so more? Can you be more specific? Is, can you be more specific? Is it like a positive thing, or what, what, what? Can you be more specific? Yeah, what MTN did is positive, right? So what I'm suggesting is you look at what the, whatever the company is doing to ah. cope, whether it, whether they are really coping. So MTN, one of the things they did is that they terminated some of their deals with Aisha stores and they went with American Tower Corporation, right? And it, it has the details, uh, well, I don't have all the details in my head, but the gist of it is that they are now getting better terms on the management of their towers, and they did not go back on the deal because they, they think it's good for them. And yeah. so that, that was very encouraging. And another thing about MTN is, as you said, their position from quotes, even, um, even though they made losses last year, they are still increasing how are investing towards good involves a lot of uh, internet usage so good internet connection has been a thing a very pressing need for me i've tried almost all the local the major local isps and uh, just before i bought starlink i tried it i was in mtn they've been good if their 4g service is good for the best among the locals and they are also having an edge in both Airtel and MTN. They are having an edge in 5G uh, penetration. But here is where MTN gets a, a stronger edge. They are already almost a monopoly player in the telecom sector. Yeah. They, I expect them to acquire more spectrums this year. In fact, I am expecting them to acquire nine mobile spectrums. So, I so, expect that company, nine mobile, to die out and MTN should acquire their spectrum. So, so they have huge growth potential in Nigeria, mm. and also they are, they are now the I think they are the only ones providing fiber optic service. Um, I was considering relocating to one of the areas where they provide fiber optic service because of this specifically. And so they are expanding. I've seen their projects around, so it's very encouraging, right? They have future growth potential and. When I did it, MTN last December, that's one thing that I, although I, I did not go in because I was being greedy and I wanted to buy the December dip, and I was so greedy that I did not even notice the dip because I thought it would be deep further. But so I let, think so, MTN is a good one. So, question for you. Qu- 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 question. Just question. look at their yeah. The risk. yeah, question for you. Do you think that um, the the issue with the other telecom car that lost its connectivity, do you think it favors MTN or it's neutral to MTN and all that? What do you think? That other car that lost its connectivity, though, is, is it going to be a net positive or is neutral? What do you think? Oh, well, I, 
the market is there. It's I think it's MTN's market to lose, uh, but it should be a positive for Nigeria for MTN because I don't see any other one that can except Intel, but I don't see any other one that can fuel. The the void, yeah. Okay, okay, makes sense, makes sense. Good, call. yeah, makes sense. Good call, good call. Thank you, appreciate that. I uh, see you. No, sorry, Dikoma, Dikoma, sorry, the, uh, infinite. Thanks so much. Yes, yeah, Dikoma, go ahead. Hello, Carl, thank you, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Olmide, also, you'll be very helpful. I have a question, this is more personal. So, in this scenario, I have about 15 to 20k USD sitting in a dorm account that is only going to be needed in the fourth quarter of the year okay the assumption here is that this money is sitting in the nigerian dom account and it's obviously not um, affected by devaluation or inflation or stuff like that um will sitting in that dom account the best um way to keep that uh, fund for uh, six to nine months or what kind of investment um instruments would you recommend for such a short term uh, thing. Keeping in mind that at the time when, when this funds is going to be needed, it's actually going to be needed in Naira. Okay, but right now it's in USD, and we have about just three quarters to keep. It. Yeah, I mean, bro, buy buy uh, dollar savings now. There are many dollar savings um, funds so in Nigeria. The problem about it as a Nigerian is that you have to move the money in and out. You have to put it in Naira and then take it back to USD. I have a bunch of them. Like no, hold up, hold up. You you have dollar, dollar yeah. currency. Yeah, they, they take dollar currency, not Naira. They take dollar currency. Yes, and exa- I don't want to mention uh, brand names, but most of them will say that for you to be able to do that, since um, most USD cards don't work, okay, you have to kind of like change with black market. Okay, let, 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 just, just to be clear, right? So in your DOM account, do you have dollar cash or you have it in an account? It's not an account. It's in one of the Nigerian banks. Okay, so not, not cash. Okay, exactly. so what I'm saying is that, yes, so take the money out, get physical dollar, then go to a Nigerian dollar fund and give them the dollar for the six months. Dollar. Pulling it out. Pulling it out. Uh-huh. Then translates to them wanting to put it out at the Naira, right? Most so then, of them don't. Then there's nothing else you can do now. Because the way you want to make the money, it, what's the interest in six months compared to the ref, what what price will they pay you in if they put it out in dollar? What price are they giving you? Is it, it's not one twelve, right? You're saying something else? Uh, I wouldn't know yet. So you want to, you're, you're gonna get get that information, get how much rate they will exchange for you right that's one thing if the rate is too bad then go online and pay for someone's exports and get the money out of nigeria or someone's imports you say okay i have dollar many people in nigeria want dollar you want to import something you pay for them then they give you naira then you take your naira you buy dollar so like i want to pay my school fees in uh, in america i pay you pay via your dom account and i pay you naira at black market rate I don't see what's holding you back. I you, I pay you in black market. You take your black market and you buy dollar and you give it to the naira, the dollar fund guys. What's the? No, I think the issue he has is that maybe he's talking about tra- transferring the funds from one point to another, depending mm. on the bank uses. So, for example, if you use a standard charter, for example, mm. they have a world management team that you can definitely. Um, open dollar mutual funds or fix the account directly mm. as long as you didn't get that fund through uh, NAFEX you know and um, these banks are very careful yeah. they don't really invest in proceeds that come from the black market you need to also understand that rule then also I think there's a new rule now that uh, you can't transfer from a local dollar account to a local dollar account except for oil companies or corporate accounts you also need to be aware of that so what they're trying to do, what the CPN is trying to do is that they're trying to discourage uh, dollar investment via unofficial channel and, you know, and turn down speculation. But there are other ways you can do about it. We have investment banks like Cardinal Stone, Maristan, that have dollar. But the question here is that sometimes for you to qualify for such um, investment bonds, you need 
and 15,000 might be quite small for them. So you need to look at those that have um, the ones that will fit you. So I think all you just need to do is speak to your investment bank. They'll give you other options. But that's the available option right now. Yeah, but he doesn't know the, he doesn't know the price they're going to even exchange. If we, if we had that information, we could then say, okay, it's bad to do it this way or you can should go ahead and do it. If it's not a lot of money that they were exchanged way that you will lose when you go from dollar to naira then that might be an option for you i think gq value is quite uh, i think it's on the app you can even change your dollars to i think it's give me a, give me a second guys higher than give me a second uh, what you get the close to but i don't think he wants to change his money except he wants, he wants i don't think he wants to change and since it's not in nigeria i think what he's considering is how he can uh, move the dollar savings to um, dollar investment directly, but you know, I don't know the source of his dollar. Was he in flow? Was he from yes. the black market? It's it 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 I yes. I don't know. have a problem. Most Nigerian investment banks, I just don't want to call names, uh, top uh, that have dollar mutual funds will accept it. In fact, if you have influence of that size, normally your investment officer, your bank officer will be there, alighting to that scene. Why don't you put when it's noticed that you have this funds for a particular period of time, they will flag to you that why don't you consider such investment? Because banks like Starters, Chatter, Stambik, City, FCMB, they have such uh, programs for people like you. Yeah, so I think the first thing is to find out if you lose money, right? If you convert, if you lose money, then there are other options. Maybe you could then pay for someone. So if somebody wants to buy something abroad, you pay. Then you get Naira. From your dumb account, you paid and you get Naira. Then from there, you can move on. But you need to find out what the bank will offer you. If the bank is not going to offer you a lot of loss, go through the bank side. You know, Put your paperwork, transfer it or get your money out and then buy your dollar, um, dollar fund. Because CBN wants to now introduce, allow Nigerian banks to introduce dollar fund. Not even the savings, like you can issue a bond dollar. So they are going towards there. So, yeah. Guys, we really, really have to go. So, uh, we're going to do see you, ready, call a day, and then we'll call today, right? See you, ready, call day, and we'll call today. See you. Go ahead, sir. Yeah. Um, hi, Carmen. Hi, Emily. Uh, thanks for the knowledge. Um, what's a quick question? Um, would the student loan that I'm going to be giving to the students in Nigeria, is that going to be covered by the that the government has approved? I've been doing some research, and I'm thinking, is there a way to, you know, make sure uh, invest in uh, potential securitization of those loans so um, is there a way of creating a three-party system whereby um, the CBN through the loan board is, um, the, the, the money is repackaged into interest bearing securities and uh-huh. we as retail investors um, can get um, monthly inflows through that repackaging of that security is that is it something that uh, uh-huh. sector, I, like, looking at? I like how you're thinking so, but you're bringing the the way it runs abroad, which is the secret union to which is the student loan, the market to Nigeria. Yeah. It, it, the, the, the way they are doing it in Nigeria is that they want the individual to go get a a guarantee. It's not a it's not a fund. You go get a guarantee from a lawyer or whoever it is. Then the government funds you. Then yeah. you pay. Then you pay back, right? Unless so, there is no market that you can say securitize the loans per se because the guy gets the money paid to the university then he pays back the university so unless the government even in the United States the government had to come in and allow that securitization yeah. through the Sally and all that unless they yeah. do that here you can't securitize a government um, what's it called a, a, a government flow you can't do it you, like you can't go to a pension and say uh, the money that's going to come from your pension, I'm going to take it from you. Things like that. Unless the government allows it. Because if the guy says, I'm not going to give it to you, you can't go to court. So if you can't okay. legally claim that flow, you can't securitize it. But it's a good idea that the government should look at, which is the way it's done abroad, right? To say, okay, if the student is in school, then he can then maybe come to you. This is how they should have done it in the first place. He can get a loan from anybody. Then the government guarantees that loan, but in this case, okay. it's getting a loan from the government directly. So the government itself okay. is a guarantee. So you can't go and guarantee the government because the government guarantee is even 
higher than your guarantee. What you are saying would work if the banks were issuing the loans to the students. Okay. Then you could buy it up from the banks, securitize it, and convert it to a unit fund that individuals could invest in. But in this case, the government is the one issuing the loans and is guaranteeing the loans. Okay. As our second question, uh, what about um, before I go? Um, so we know the inflation has gone up. Do you think there's a possibility that could we introduce deregulation in energy? Because I, I think <laughs> the way we operate in energy is through, uh, it's monopolized. So is there a way we could lobby for deregulation? Because I believe that we have deregulation in so in English, you are saying increase your you are saying increase the prices. That's what you are saying. Increase the prices. No, 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 no. no have more, have more uh, open access. Um, you know, have um, other marketers come and do what they have to do in terms of capital <laughs> intensive. You know, instead of having a a a, a, a one so party do all the whole uh, activities. Yeah, I think you are saying you are completely correct. That. You are correct, but it, the thing is that you know what, we just talk, spoke about this just a few seconds ago. The Nigerian market has deregulated the, the the generation of power. So I think if you have less than, if you're going to produce less than a certain megawatt, you can do that. You don't have to go through the like the the reform. You don't have to go through the Nigerian uh, reform board. Oh, I kind of I've forgotten the name now. If I'm going to produce one megawatt of power, I don't need to sell to say the grid. I can basically sell to an estate. I can do that. That is allowed. But I think okay. the problem is that if you deregulate, what you are saying is that you re removed the regulation, which would increase the price regulation. So prices will go up. And that's the problem with the Nigerian power sector, that if those prices go up, not a lot of Nigerians can afford it. If you take away Lagos, Port Harcourt, maybe Aba, maybe Abuja, how many cities in Nigeria can afford to pay the full market price for power? So that's the point. Even if you go to a city, a city that can pay, apart from the GRA and the government area, where else can pay the full power? So it might be that your answer is yes, you deregulate. If you are maybe offering a, you know, a, a new form of power, I'm someone who was here saying wells to gas or gas or renewables that is cheaper, right, to a community, and you can collect the monies from that community directly that might make sense right but on a pan-nigerian level it's already regulated they've already they've, they've increased the amount of megawatts that you can offer without getting that full license of a genco they've done that but i think the major problem in nigeria is that the pricing reform means that not a lot of people can afford to off take that power look at what happened in ghana keep in mind what happened in ghana they had too much power too much power and that's what sort of causing these issues they are having so power is a funny thing if you generate it it must be used right and it's priced irrespective of whatever you do with it so uh, I, I get i get you where you're going to but it's it really has to do with the nigerian population to uptake that power if industries come back that's an off-taker if industries come back and you have these large estates. Imagine if Maturi Estate in Lagos was all manufacturing. Imagine if the um, Transamadi was all manufacturing. You go to Kano and Kuna was all manufacturing. That's uptake. That's ability to pay for that power. That's pay as you use power. But you go to those industrial estates, there are now churches and all that kind of stuff. So they are not really taking power 24-7 to generate um, goods and services. So... The, if you look, it's all debt, debt, debt. Uh, the disco has gotten power from the Genko but can't pay. Why can't they pay? <laughs> so interesting, but that's basically where it is. So, did you have any insight on that? Because he's gonna, he's our last guy, and then we'll call today. Yeah, I think you said a lot, and I think uh, there's nothing to add. I just want to. I feel that uh, you know the electric consumption of the country is quite this uh, is embarrassing to say the least. I spoke earlier that uh, the average electricity consumption of a refrigerator in the United States is higher than that of Nigeria. Wait, wait, wait. Let me say that again. Say that again. <laughs> yeah, the average uh, electricity consumption of a refrigerator in the United States is higher than that of Nigeria. You know, the average Nigeria. 
and you know, that just tells you how endemic our uh, uh, collaborative productivity is. Because I I recall when I <laughs> was treating uh, features in uh, electric companies, what we look at is the electric consumption of that country. It really portrays the economic activity. That's why many Western companies, rather than just looking at Chinese numbers, they focus on their electricity consumption because that shows the correlation between economic activity. In Nigeria, it's quite embarrassing. And I think we really need to work on that. And you know, Carl, you said something that really a lot of people don't take into consideration. Our disposable income is low. Our purchasing power is low. How do you create incentives for companies to um, sell? And that's why many multinationals are not even looking at Nigeria. In fact, um, Davos is about to kick off. And I saw a survey that um, Africa is at the back bench when it comes to FDI investment in the next five years. Wow. Well, that's um, it is what it is. But we're getting there. Let's hope that we get there and grow the economy so that just can get richer. Consumption can go up. It's a cycle, guys. If the economy goes up, then Nigerians need more jobs to keep the economy up. More jobs mean revenues or wages have to go up to attract more workers. If wages go up, then consumption goes up. If consumption goes up, it means more companies then are producing. If more companies are producing, then GDP goes up. It's a cycle. GDP goes up, more companies need more workers. More workers need more wages. More wages means more consumption. More consumption means more companies. It's that cycle. In Nigeria, that cycle is broken. So we don't have wage growth, we don't have employment, we don't have companies producing anything and that's the problem. So that our, our leaders quote unquote have their work cut out for them. Nigeria has got two big problems and one effect. Two big problems. Number one, oil theft. Number two, food inflation. And number three, lack of consumption. These are the three things they must fix. You, if you build roads from here to next year without fixing the oil theft, the food inflation, and the following consumption, nothing will happen. We have to focus, number one, stopping this steal of crude oil illegally so the government gets revenues to do stuff, stopping food inflation so that the food prices come down. That becomes a salary increase for all Nigerians. If food prices come down, that's a salary increase for all Nigerians. And then that would then lead to consumption. And once Nigerians start to consume, the economy will correct itself three big things guys let's end on that note we've spent believe it or not four hours four hours today just talking open forum Olimide, thank you so much i can't thank you enough i think we should do this more often just to talk around people's questions not our own agenda just open the forum people ask questions and we'll just see as the best of our abilities give our own take not advisory all educational not a request to buy or sell risk is always uh, disclosed and all that we should do more of that thank you for all the folks that are listening it's recorded uh once i end i'm going to post it on twitter also on youtube and facebook if you want to listen and follow it's going to be available as well for you so let me just say thank you guys for listening so uh to the space i appreciate you all and have the very very best of your week uh take care guys love you and bye thank you so much bye